Hello, my name is Anthony and this is a tutorial or demonstration on how to build a patch in Thor that will take CV and then draw it into a waveform in your sequencer and then take that waveform and turn it back into CV so that you can use it to uh, modulate whatever it is that you want to modulate. Uh, this is something that uh, I find very helpful just because I'm a bit of a CV novice even maybe a CV idiot, but uh, it helps me visualize what uh, modulations are actually going on, and um, anyway, I just find it super helpful. So without further ado, let's get started with it. We'll need to open up a Thor, reset the patch if you haven't already, and then you can turn off the oscillator and turn off the filter like so. Once you've got this, we can just go ahead and update the matrix. We're going to set up four sources. The first two will be CV input 1, CV input 2. Then the next two are audio input 1 and 2. We're going to set all up to about 90%. Let's see. I find this gives you uh, just about everything you need out of it. Uh, CV signals seem to be uh, very powerful, so uh, uh, just a little bit of trim makes me feel more comfortable with it at least. All right, and then from CV in 1, we'll go into audio output 1 and audio output 2 for CV in 2, and then the CV outputs will be used for the audio ins. And there you have it. Save your patch, call it something convenient like CV to audio and back again. And there you are, you have a patch. Now I'd like to take a moment and demonstrate how it works. Um, one thing I would advise doing is creating another mix channel, setting it over the Thor there. And what you're going to do is run the direct out of your Thor into the input of the mix channel, and then flip around and mute it. The reason we do this is, like I said before, the CV tends to be um, kind of crazy with the level. I mean, it'll 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 peak out real easily. So this kind of creates a dead end for the uh, audio version of the CV to go to without uh, running out your speakers and blowing off your face. Okay, so let's rename the Thor to something smart like CV to audio to CV. And let's see, what else do we need to do here? All right, well, let's pick something CV wise to uh, transform. One of the things that my bass player mind had the most difficulty adjusting to when I got into Reason uh, was envelopes. So I'm going to build another Thor. Really don't even need the audio output hooked up to that mix channel. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the oscillator, get rid of the filter, and I'm going to make some adjustments to both the mod envelope and the amp envelope. On the amp envelope, I'm just going to increase the attack just a little bit. I'm going to decrease the sustain and decrease the decay you know, down under a second and increase the release just a bit. On the mod envelope, I'm going to increase the attack uh, fairly significantly and then we'll decrease the decay and decrease the release. All right, now let's take both of those, the amp envelope and the mod envelope, set them both to about 100% and run them out CV1 and 2. Now you can take CV out 1 and 2 and run them into the CV ends of your converter Thor, like so. And now let's see, let's rename this Joker to Envelope Thor, so we'll know which one we're talking about over here in the sequencer. Uh, set up a loop of about uh, 8 bars and let's draw in some notes. I'm going to put a eighth note in on C3. And what I'm going to do is increase the duration of the note every bar 
by an eighth node. So that's a half. Uh, then uh, let's say five eighths. Go to six and then go to seven. And then the last one will be a full bar. All right. So that gives us a variety of different note lengths to trigger our envelopes with. So we'll see uh, different things coming from the CV. All right. So with that, let's make this a recording source. This is the converter Thor CV to audio. And then we're going to create two audio tracks over here. We'll call one of them CV left and the other one CV right. Okay, now let's set both of those. We need to change the inputs, one to the left and the other to the right. And I think we're good to go here. This mix channel can be deleted. All right, let's try it out. What am I forgetting? I don't know. I'm sure I'll find something here in about three seconds. Uh, yeah, we need to arm the other track and go. Hey, and there you have it. These are our envelopes. And now, like I said, as a rock musician, as somebody who isn't used to the idea of CV or um, LFOs or anything like that, you know, I have a hard time determining what these things are going to actually do when I set them up. It's one thing to twiddle some knobs, but it, you know, becomes more uh, of an art form if you actually know kind of what you're doing. Yeah, that's my philosophy for the day. Okay, so there you go. A very fast attack with a slow release and a slow attack with a quicker release. Neat little jagged tooth, sawtooth kind of deals. All right, so now that we have them, what can we do with them? Well, seeing them's fine and dandy, but uh, we need to, uh, you know, make use of this technology. So what we'll do is we'll take the direct outs from the two audio, the two audio tracks that we were using there, and run them into the audio inputs of the converter Thor. All right. And now we can create an instrument. Let's go into the Reason Factory Sound Bank. And let's just grab something like a pad. I don't know. Really doesn't matter what it is. Wonder what this sounds like. Ooh, that's pretty deep. You know, how about a... I think I was testing something with this earlier. So we'll use it, Ageless Expression. All right, and now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw in one long note, say on C2. And what this sounds like without any modulation. Just your typical uh, spacey kind of pad sound. All right, we've got our audio going back into the Thor. Let's take the modulation output of number one and run it into rotary one. This will affect the filter amount. And let's just see what that sounds like. Again, it's this uh, sharper, more, um, I don't know, whatever waveform that we'll hear first. You can hear the little spike in frequency there. And with the delay, it kind of adds a, a nice little texture to the pad that wasn't there before. You know, and yeah, that's great and all, but I wouldn't have known really what was causing that if it weren't for the uh, drawing here. So now that we've seen something that we like, we can edit this audio as if it were, you know, anything else. So... Um. 
and immediately you you can actually see what you're doing and you can um you know find uh, more practical uses for the LFO now that you know what it looks like all right just for kicks and grins let's go ahead and sound sound out the other one this one is a little bit slower attack mm -hmm. Certainly not as noticeable with a gradual attack, but it's certainly doing something. So what happens if we were to uh, keep this in CV1? Let's even use this in a couple different places, like so, and use CV2 into Rotary 2, which is the uh, resonance. So yeah, let's do that right there. All right, so now we have the little solly tooth kind of thing, and revert our sloping kind of deal. Uh, and this right here will affect the resonance of the filter, assuming that knob does what it suggests that it does. Not a real drastic change. But certainly a change. So anyway, there you have it. This would be a, a quick and easy way to analyze your CV so that you actually know what it is you're doing and, you know, can find more uses for it. Anyway, we'll see you with another video sometime shortly.